Hey guys, Cajun Cardboard coming at you from the great state of Louisiana with another episode of Explore the Card. As always, you're going to be watching this on uh, Friday. I see March 25th, I think that would be. Uh, today's episode, we are going to feature the 1998 Topps East West Refractor and a uh, really beautiful. Um, you know, Jordan insert and parallel. You know, we talk about this sometimes, the difference between inserts and parallels. This is an insert, but it is a parallel of the insert. There is a base version of this east-west insert, and this is the refractor parallel of that east-west insert. Uh, so without any more delay, let's get cranking. I am gonna switch over to my spreadsheet here so I can give you all the data on the set that this card uh, originates from. It is uh, from this set right here that you see on your screen, the 1998 top set. Um, it is a 220 card set. Uh, this is a picture of the base Jordan rookie card from that set. This is sort of a forgotten um, set. I mean, I know a lot of people are familiar with 98 tops chrome, but this 1998 top set is a little more condition sensitive. It's, it's sort of got that bronze color to it. Uh, it is a 220 card set. Jordan's base card is number 77, which you see uh, on your screen here. Really good looking card. Pretty rare in PSA 10 condition actually. Um, the rookies in 1998, the big rookies are uh, Pierce, Dirk, and Vince. And so if you were hunting rookies, uh, you know, uh, back then you were probably trying to chase them down. Maybe Stoudemire, maybe uh, Antoine Jameson, I think were also in there if I'm not mistaken. Uh, but the, that Jordan PSA 10 card that I just showed you on our screen here uh, in PSA 10 condition, it is a Pop 64 and it's a $400 card. So not your a typical, uh, you know, Jordan base Fleer base upper deck card that's you know 120, 150 bucks. This one's a little more rare. It's pop 64 and it's a PSA 10 is a $400 card. Um, there was, believe it or not, um, let's see if we can pull it up on the screen. There was a parallel Opeachy set that was produced as well. Those cards must be preposterously rare. I will plead ignorance on that. I do not know um, all of the details of that, uh, of that parallel set that was produced. Uh, but I know this, if you go look, the Jordan uh, Opeachy has only been graded 12 times. There is only one PSA 10 in the world. Uh, so I'm assuming the print run on those Opeachy were significantly lower uh, than the ordinary tops. I, again, I'm not an expert on Opeachy. I know um, they're out there. I know it's a little bit more prevalent in baseball, like from the 80s. And if I recall, these were like... Uh, produced and uh, distributed in, uh, I'm sorry, I shouldn't say produced, but distributed in Canada maybe. Um, that's a total guess. Again, I'm not an expert. When I don't know something, I'm not going to pretend I do. But I think that these Opeachy cards were distributed in Canada. Uh, and I'm going to assume the print run was much lower uh, considering the card's only been graded 12 times, uh, which is pretty rare for a Jordan card. So uh, anyway, the most notable insert sets, I've got some of them pulled up on your screen. You know, you're talking about these apparitions. Uh, this is a really beautiful insert set. Those are, uh, that'll definitely be featured, you know, in a future episode at some point of Explore the Card. Uh, they are one in every 36 serial, uh, series one retail packs. Uh, another one is these uh, Coast to Coast right here. Uh, this is also one in 36 series two retail packs. Um, another relatively popular is the Legacies. Uh, which is a really beautiful card, very refractor-like finish, looks like a silver prism almost. Uh, those were inserted one in uh, 36 Series 2 Hobby exclusive packs. Uh, the Round Ball Royalty and Round Ball Royalty Refractors uh, were one in 36 packs, uh, Series 1. Uh, the, this is a really popular card. They came with a coating on them. And then, of course, our East-West and East-West refractors. There were other insert sets in there, but those are the big ones that really come to mind. Um, so just to give you an idea of some of the other insert sets that are involved, um, the East-West refractor parallel insert set. Uh, let's find it so we can look and see who else is in here. We're going to talk about Jordan today, and uh, there is a pleasant surprise uh, on the back of the Jordan card, it is Kobe Bryant. For those of you who aren't familiar with the card, while this is loading, for some reason it's taking forever, uh, I'll show you a picture of mine. I own the card in a PG, uh, BGS 10 condition. Um, you know, PWCC, this card's in my PWCC vault. You can always get high def images of the card. Uh, this is the front of the card. Got Jordan, you know, shooting his jumper uh, in his red Bulls 23 uniform. Um, on the back, you'll see Kobe. And so the reason I know the East is the front 
and the West is the back, uh, and this is an interesting conversation piece, but uh, is that it says the uh, the card number on the Kobe side. So it says EW5, which is our the card number within the set. It is the EW5 within the set. Let me try to do this again. I don't know why it's not pulling up. Let me try one more time here. I wanted to show you guys some of the other cards that were in there. Um, but it's just loading. It's not juicing up. Uh, but anyway, so Jordan's supposed to be on the front when you slab it. Kobe is supposed to be on the back. And the same can be said for all of the east-west as far as I know. It should be east-front, west-back. Uh, yeah, it's not loading up. Um, but uh, some people slab it backwards. And then recently, if you watch my PWCC Weekly Recap, somebody actually sold one that had Kobe slabbed on the front and Jordan on the back. And there was no subgrades. And it actually... Uh, sold for more than the last uh, correctly slapped version with subgrades uh, and it was a BGS 9.5 copy if I recall so um, interesting I guess you can tell PSA to slap it however the heck you want if you're a Kobe collector maybe you want Kobe on the front um, you know or if you're a KG or a Pippin you can have them flip it whatever the case may be but um Anyway, within this set, yeah, it's just not going to load. Oh, there it goes. Okay, so now we've got it pulled up. As you can see, there's 20 in there. Uh, there are 20 cards. Each one of these refractors has an east on the front and a west on the back. Um, and uh, that means there's 40 players total included in the set, whether they be on the front or the back. 20 from the east, 20 from the west. Out of those 40 players, uh, 19 of the players are in the Hall of Fame. Uh, and Tim Hardaway is a finalist for 2022 induction. Um, it, it, maybe I missed something there. Maybe that's already been decided. But if Tim Hardaway gets in the Hall of Fame, uh, he's been a finalist before and hasn't got in. But if he gets in the Hall of Fame, that would make it an even 20 out of 40, which is 50%. That's pretty cool when you have an insert set with 20 Hall of Famers in it, uh, especially when it's refractor front, refractor back. Um, anyway, I thought that was cool. Uh, you know, some of the other big ones in here, uh, Tim Hardaway and Stockton is a, is a really cool one. Alonzo and Shaq is a big one. Pippen and Garnett's a really cool one. Um, you know, you got Dikembe and Olajuwon, Iverson and Peyton, Ewing and Robinson. I mean, you really do have some really big time, really cool uh, options to choose from here. Um, you know, there are some guys that never quite clicked in the league, like your Tim Thomas, uh, your Jim Jacksons down here, McDice or whatever. Um, but um, anyway, a friend of mine here locally, uh, the Ryan Scott on uh, Instagram, is actually trying to collect this entire 20 card refractor set in PSA 10 condition. And, uh, and since they're relatively scarce, He's got to do it the hard way, so he's bought a bunch of raw and submitted to PSA, hoping for good results anyway. Uh, so we'll send out best wishes to Ryan on putting that 20 card set together. That is no easy task. It'll be super, super beautiful to look at if he can put that together and have 20 PSA 10s uh, stacked up next to each other. Would make for a great Instagram pic. Uh, anyway, this East West uh, refractor is one in 440 packs. There are 20. Uh, different cards within the set, which means the Jordan Kobe card is 1 in 2,880 pack odds. Uh, as we always do, let's go look at the card up close. Um, there's no narrative on this, so not much to talk about. I've already showed you kind of the picture. The East goes on the front. It's got the Earth behind Jordan. It is a refractor. Uh, this one did not come with a coating as far as I know. Uh, the round ball royalty in this set did. Uh, so Kobe's got the glow behind him as well. Um, just, you know, again... Kobe was invariably and inevitably compared to Jordan throughout his career just due to their similar play style, uh, their similar size, their position, uh, the way they scored the ball, the way they approached the game, uh, a lot of similarities. Uh, Jordan was probably just a notch above. I think most would agree. But uh, when you talk about cards that are noticeable, notable, and collectible in the hobby, this card's got to be mentioned up there with the best of them since it's got, you know, these two guys on the same card. And these are definitely two of the biggest collector bases in the hobby. I guess Jordan, LeBron, and Kobe, I would think, would be one, two, three. Um, I'm, I'm thinking, unless I'm forgetting somebody, in, in some order. Um, so, big time card. Great card to have in your collection. Um, as we always do, let's put the pop uh, and the data up on the screen for you guys. Like, like I always say, screenshot this if you don't. Um, if you have a print screen option, hit the print screen so you can save it and keep it. But I've basically taken all the data from the uh, card ladder pages for the BGS 10. This is going to be a little bit different because uh, we, we've got some BGS 10s out there. It's not super crazy, super rare. So I've got BGS 10, PSA 10, BGS 9.5, and PSA 9. I've dropped off BGS 9 for ease of use and reference. Uh, 
because there's enough here to deal with. So we included the BGS-10 on this top row. Um, if you look at it, you know, we can always pull it up in Card Ladder. I'm a Card Ladder Pro member. I suggest you look, in, look into it if you're not already. I don't get paid by them. I don't have an affiliate link or anything like that. Just go sign up. It's, uh, it's a great data pricing tool that I like to use uh, for all of my data. But uh, I've got the BGS-10 pulled up on the screen here. Uh, but I do want to keep this up here because if you have a phone, you can go ahead and screenshot this. You know, the stuff that sticks out to me about this table, fellas, is, is really going to be the gem percentage here. You can see BGS and PSA have both graded about the same quantity, 228 versus 208. Uh, the, G, the, the BGS percentage is more than 1 out of 10. I don't know another card where the BGS 10 percentage is greater than uh, 10%. That is a really high number. Um, if you go look at PSA and BGS for just the gym grade, which is PSA 10 and BGS 9.5, it's 40, almost 40% and 65%. So 76% of the east-west refractors submitted to BGS get a gem or better grade. That is very unique. You are never going to see that again on uh, Explore the Card, as far as I know. Maybe I'm, maybe I'm wrong. I don't want to jump to conclusions, but I don't ever recall seeing uh, a card that grades as well as this particular card does. I don't know if it has to do with the texture, the fact that it's refractor front and refractor back, or maybe the sturdiness of the card stock. I'm not sure, but that is a uh, crazy high percentage for gems and even a crazier percentage for BGS 10 compared to most Jordan cards in the 90s. Um, the other thing that sticks out to me, I mean, you guys can see on here the most recent sale price. The BGS 10 is about 10 grand. PSA 10 trailing just behind at 7,800. The highest sale. These cards both spiked first quarter 2021, which is not unusual. Uh, you can see actually six of the 25 BGS 10s have sold in the last six months. That seems like a high number to me, fellas, uh, but that's the number. Um, you know, 15 gem or better copies have sold just in the last six months. So you're not really talking about one of those crazy easy scarce cards like we've looked at on these episodes in the past this card is a card you can go out and get you can even get in bgs 10 if you're willing to fork over 10 grand uh, but certainly you can pick it up in a gem copy between psa and bgs uh, if, you know, on a little bit more than once a month basis, if you're willing to go chase the dollar, um, I've got the average sales price for each of these cards over the past six months. As you can see, BGS 10 just certainly would lead the way a little bit over the PSA 10, uh, the BGS 9.5 slightly, uh, above the PSA nine. All of that's pretty commonplace. Uh, the percentage change in six months is the next thing that jumps out at me. They're all down. Uh, the BGS 10 is down the least, and I'm going to go ahead and attribute that to the fact that it's got the lowest pop by far. It's one-third the pop, and it's down one-third the amount. Uh, the PSA 10 is down 23% over the last six months. Uh, the BGS 9.5 is down 36% over the last six months. And uh, the PSA 9 is down 16% over the last six months. Another reason for this, uh, this decrease might be the pop increase. And so these are some numbers that are really interesting to me. Uh, PSA has added 16 PSA 10s just since last April. So in less than a year, they've added 16 to the pop, uh, the pop 81, right? So it was, what does that mean? It was pop uh, 65, uh, maybe uh, 10 months ago, and now it's pop 81. So maybe that's, you know, pretty significant population growth. That's about a 20% growth in the population just over the last year, less than a year. Uh, that might attribute, uh, you know, be attributed to the minus 23 percentage change. Um, it could just be dumb luck with the starting point. Maybe somebody paid a really high, you know, amount for the beginning data. I don't know. Uh, we're going to go look at the tables a little bit closer. But uh, And then the BGS 9.5 is down even more severely. It's down 36%. But here's the number that really sticks out. PSA's graded 59 of these dang things over the last 10 months. That seems like a really big number to me. Uh, but uh, anyway, let's pull up the PSA 10 because it's a little more populated uh, than the BGS 10. But that, that just shows you right there the last year. Obviously, like we talked about, you know, these records up here were being set. Um, well, actually, this is after the bubble, but uh, but right here, yeah, they're both kind of after the bubble. If we look at two years, let's look at two years. You know, again, as all Jordan cards, this card's up 465% over the last two years. You know, people like to have, you know, recency bias and look at what it's done in the last year. It's just going to kind of skew the big picture, but 
Uh, you know, has the card settled over the last three months? It looks like it to me. You know, it's a seven to seven to nine thousand dollar card somewhere in that range. Uh, just to give you guys uh, an idea, and that's that's our card ladder data uh, that we always like to rely on. There are no um, you know BGS black label tens. I'll put the data chart back up there. There are no black labels uh, for this Jordan Kobe card. My God, could you imagine what the the that price would be fetched for that card that would really pop with the refractor front refractor back but there are none there are however two total black labels in the set that have been graded by bgs they are both the pippin and the kg i think that would be a really cool card to have a black label pippin kg east west refractor um it would just be fascinating to look at i've never seen one let me know in the comments if you've got it or if you've seen it or what you think it would be worth uh, but uh, but no black label Kobe Jordan. There's uh, 254 combined gem or better copies of this card between PSA and BGS. So again, really big time card featuring two of the groups, two of the greatest of all time, including the greatest of all time. 254 copies gem or better, including the BGS tens with the PSA and the BGS mint uh, gem mint copies. Um, that's a big number. Um, how often does this card sell on the market? As we can see, it has sold 15 times in gem or better condition uh, just over the last six months. That would be about 30 times over the course of a year, which would give you about two, a little over two times a month on average. So again, if you want the card in gem mint condition or better, you can certainly go get it. This is not one of those cards where you have to beat the bushes. You just have to be ready to pay the price. Uh, what's available on eBay? We always like to see what eBay's got available. And again, this is going to change a little bit between today, which is uh, Tuesday the 22nd, and Friday the 25th when you watch this video. But uh, 23 results come up when I plug in 1998 East West Refractor Jordan. Uh, so like we said, it, there's no shortage of this card. You're going to find tons of PSA 9s. Here's a BGS 9.5, you know, 8s. Uh, nines, nines, nines is going to be kind of that sweet spot number. Uh, here's a PSA 10 available. It's uh, pretty drastically overpriced, but you may try to work on them. Here, as we talked about, here's one that's slab with Kobe on the front. Uh, for you Kobe collectors, if you really wanted Kobe on the front and to, uh, and to relink, you know, relegate Michael Jordan, the greatest who's ever played pro sports, onto the back, you could do that. Um, Another nine, a 10 here for 17, a little steep there. Another one with Jordan on the back. And they, oops, uh, they got, not only they have Jordan on the back, but the primary picture for the, for the listing is with the back showing Jordan. Makes me think maybe they should put Jordan on the front. Uh, a Jordan 9.5. Again, these are all a little bit overpriced, but a lot of them take best offers. And when there's a large inventory out there, maybe you can get some of these guys to move. Uh, but that's just kind of giving you a look at some of them. Here's Burbank's got one that's priced relatively reasonably at $59.99. If you can get them to move, you know, as we looked at, you know, the price for that 9.5 last sold is $37.20. So maybe you can get them down somewhere around there. It's worth a shot. Uh, we always like to look at the sealed wax as well. I'm not an expert at eBay searches. Usually I just kind of filter it myself, but I think I've tried to take out Stadium Club, Chrome, and Finest, and here's what's left. I got 16 results, and some of the Stadium Clubs still slip through the cracks, uh, but uh, but anyway, these are uh, 1998, you know, tops. It's going to have Series 1 and Series 2. It's going to have retail and hobby in here, but uh, just to give you an idea that boxes are out there if you want to try to chase these. Here's a, you know, this, the, the hobby boxes from Series 2 are going to be a lot more valuable than the uh, Series 1 and Series 2 retail, of course. Um, but uh, but they're out there. If you guys are interested in these uh, in these cards, just uh, do your research and make sure you understand. As we talked about from Trading Card Database, if you want to go check, make sure you're familiar with what series uh, uh, one or two, and then whether it's retail or hobby, the insert that you're looking for uh, comes from. And that's why you can just click insert here, and it'll show you all the ones that uh, that uh, come from which. So that that just kind of gives you an idea. Um, you know, I always like to you know let you guys know if I'm a buyer a sell or a hold based on the card that I have in my collection. Sometimes I don't have the card in my collection, which means I'm probably a buy. Uh, but this one I do have, and I have it in the best grade you can get uh, since there's no black labels. So 
I am clearly a hold on this card uh, for a very long time. I have no reason to sell it. I didn't buy it to sell it. I didn't buy it as a, you know, I mean, everything we buy, we, we consider an investment because it's an appreciating, appreciating asset. But, uh, you know, I didn't buy it to flip it. Uh, I don't have duplicates. And so this is the card that I wanted in my collection that I wanted to look at and show people uh, and appreciate. And so uh, I've got what I want. I am definitely a hold for a very long time. Um, these cards, as we talked about, let me pull the table back up the bgs 10 falls into that mid-range category which i consider cards that are in the five to ten thousand dollar range so the bgs 10 is a you know super solid mid-range card but it's pushing high end and my guess is perhaps the next uh, BGS 10 would sell for over that $10,000 mark, which would push it into that high end range. Uh, the PSA 10 is a steady solid mid range card at 7,800, right in the middle of that five to $10,000 range. The BGS 9.5 last sold for 37.20, making it a solid low end card right in the middle of the one to $5,000 range or 5,000 and below range. In the PSA 9, same thing, 3,500. I'd much rather the BGS 9.5 than the PSA 9. That's just me, but there's PSA, not, uh, PSA only collection collectors out there and that's probably pushed the price of uh, the PSA 9 up to almost the same as the BGS 9.5 minimum gem card as you can see on that table um, what are some similar cards to this card um, you know, uh, I usually pick three of them just so you guys have some idea of where this East West Refractor fits as far as, you know, insert slash parallel options in the same price range and so if we compare the uh, <clears throat> The PSA 10 uh, last sold to 7,800, so we can compare it, you know, relatively similarly to the Natural Born Thrillers from 1995 that you see on your screen, which is a Pop 50. Uh, we can compare it to the uh, 1997 Rockstars Die Cut Refractor, which is a Pop 55, which is almost right on the number, same price as the East West Refractor that we're talking about today. And then we can also compare it, and this one's a little bit lower, but a lower Pop as well. We can compare it to the Beam Team from 1995. This is the laser cut, the die cut. I think they call it. Um, I think it's like laser cut. But anyway, this is super intricately die cut. A really cool card. We've, I think, featured this on an Explore the Card episode. If we haven't, we will one day. Uh, but I think we did. I'm not really sure. You have to go back. Click the playlist, by the way, if you want to go back and binge watch uh, all of this and catch up. Uh, I have a feeling one day um, we're going to have 100 plus of these videos after a couple years of, of Friday's worth of episodes so hopefully we're creating a nice library that other people can can uh, use in the future to educate themselves and get more involved in the 1990s Jordan in certain parallel market uh, what order would I select from these four cards that we just looked at here including the one we're talking about today my order would be 95 being team first and it's uh, got a lot to do with the pop but it's also got a lot to do with the uh, appealing aesthetics of the card itself uh, even though it's the least valuable if we threw value out the window that's the card that I would want first I would want this Natural Born Thrillers card second, again, for aesthetic purposes. Uh, the next would be uh, the East-West Refractor that we're uh, discussing in this episode number 19 of Explore the Card. And lastly would be the uh, Rockstars Refractor die cut. Um, I do own, yep, I own all three of those cards in PSA uh, 10 condition. So, um, it, anyway, it's real easy for me to choose. But uh, and again, that's no slight to the Rockstars Refractor, which I think is a beautiful, fantastic, uh, not easily uh, attained card because it is only a pop 55 and uh, not many of those out there. But um, anyway, that's my order on the Cajun Cardboard scale of Jordan card relevance. I give uh, our East West Refractor that we're talking about here today. Um, I give the card a six out of ten. It was somewhere between six and a seven. If there was if there was half grades, I'd give it a six point five, like PSA, a six point five out of ten. Um, not the rarest card in the world. Um, you know, in, in PSA 10 condition, it's a pop 81. It's below that 100. Uh, but the combined gem rate, you know, between PSA and BGS 9.5 is over 200. So it's not the rarest card in the world. It's easy to attain. It's in that uh, mid-range, so it's relatively affordable. Uh, could it run one day? It probably could, but there's a there's plenty of them out there to the point where I don't think this card's going to take off and get to 80000 or something crazy like that. Maybe I'm wrong. I hope I'm wrong, but I, I don't think I am. Um, so uh, I give this card a 6 out of 10, just historically, you know, where it fits. It's not the most sought-after uh, Jordan insert out there, but it's certainly one that I think is a, a nice foundational piece in your collection and one you should consider. Um, anyway, 
anyway, thank you guys for watching. That's uh, that's really it for the episode. Um, as always, I like to thank uh, the the places that I get the data from: Trading Card Database, PWCC Vault for providing fantastic uh, vaulting options and link sharing options, uh, so I can show you guys my collection and, and give you uh, up close and detailed looks at what the card looks like, uh, all four edges and corners, front and back. Uh, thank you to Card Ladder as always. That's that's who I derive my data from, and they give us. Uh, fantastic digestible graphs and information and options to further explore each particular sale. Um, so card ladders are uh, also fantastic. And then trading card database gives us our background information about the, uh, about the sets themselves that these, uh, that these cards originate from. So, uh, anyway, thank you guys for watching. If you, uh, want to go back and binge watch, just click the playlist on my YouTube channel. It's on the main page playlist, explore the card and watch, uh, watch all 19 episodes in a row, starting from the beginning. It's kind of like game of Thrones only it's uh, Jordan cards from the 90s and parallels you can binge watch the whole thing right um, anyway thank you guys for watching um, keep collecting stay positive in the hobby and peace <laughs>